Hey Tankers, this is Ace, back with another one of my videos. Uh, first off, let me just start by saying uh, thanks so much for all the positive feedback I've been getting back on the videos I've been doing. Um, it really does provide me with a little level of pride as well as uh, some encouragement. Um, I really do uh, appreciate um, all the good positive feedback I've been getting from you guys. I am going through a little bit of a tough time right now. So, you know, the, the fact that I'm getting some positive feedback from the amazing World of Tanks community uh, definitely uh, gives me something to look forward to every day. And um, I just wanted to say I really do appreciate um, all the, the good comments and good feedback you guys have been giving me. And I do also appreciate all the questions as well as... Uh, you know all the uh, you know constructive criticism I get as well. I mean, as long as it's uh, respectful and it's uh, you know directed in a in a manner that isn't attacking, um, I am all the means going to listen to everything that it is you guys um, are interested in. And if it's something I feel is of absolute merit and is going to be useful, I'm going to include and do that. And I've had several people ask me uh, more, more recently about uh, what kind of mods I use, um, how to install mods, and those kind of things because they've been seeing that I have a different UI interface uh, than the standard mod does. So I'm here today to kind of give you guys a little bit of a, you know, just a showcase of all the mods that I have, as well as provide uh, detailed links that you will be able to find in the description of this video uh, that will actually show you, um, you know, each of the individual mods and where they're located uh, on the internet and how to download them. Um, but first things first, let me just tell you, if you do not know, uh, if you're planning on installing mods, you got to make sure that you put them in the right place. And the right place for those mods is located in underneath your C drive, from C drive to games for me, uh, then from games to your World of Tanks folder, and from your World of Tanks folder into your Res Mods folder. And that's where predominantly 90% of your files are going to go. There's a couple extra files for XVM, which I'll explain in a little bit, that go um, outside of that, and I'll explain that in detail a little bit later. And um, other than that, let me just go ahead and jump in and tell, uh, show you guys uh, some of the mods I have here today and kind of give you guys a short little overview of the stuff I have. Um, so here we go. Uh, the first thing you guys will probably notice and uh, the most predominant thing I think that dominates my screen is the double carousel mod I have. Um, I installed this a while back and the reason why I installed it is as you can see I have a lot of tanks and when I'm doing platoons which is most of the time it's really hard for me to sift through all of the tanks I have to find the specific one I'm doing. Most of the battle platoons and most of the way I do my platoons is usually by tier. It's uh, it's not about um, you know by nation or by country. It's it's about the tier level. And uh, in this mod, with the addition of being able to sift through and see twice as many tanks as you normally would be, uh, you can actually use this little extra button that they've added in to sift through and find specific tiered vehicles. So if I'm in a platoon of three and uh, if somebody picks uh, tier 8 so I just click on tier 8 and boom all my tier 8 vehicles are going to show up on the screen and all the other ones are going to stay de-highlighted. -highlight makes it really easy to sift through and find it, what it is you're looking for especially if you all have a lot of vehicles so if you're like me you have a lot of, ton of t you have a ton of takes and you're having issues keeping organized this this mod is the one for you it really does make things easier the other mod I have is I also have the XVM mod, or Extended Visualization mod. The Extended Visualization mod uh, has several uh, different aspects and elements to it. Um, one of those aspects, and the one I'm going to show you right now, is the, um, you know, inside the garage uh, area. And as you can see here, um, the stat service record page is completely changed. There's a lot of new buttons and stuff here as well as some different uh, numbers and stuff. If uh, you're unfamiliar with this, uh, let me put it to rest. I'm going to give you guys as uh, basic explanation as I can because there's a lot of information here. So bear with me if, uh, you know, if this is too much information. If you already know what all this stuff is, um, just feel free to just skip past uh, this section. But I'm going to go through in detail everything I have here so you guys can understand how everything works and uh, if you don't know what it is. If you do know, great, then just take the download descriptions uh, section which I have provided. Um, so here we go. Uh, as you can see here, uh, 
the XVM also adds in, uh, and the most important thing, and why it's so why people uh, consider it so important for, or you know, for tanking and like it so much, is because it provides uh, two different levels of player rating systems or player rating formulas. Uh, those two formulas are the WN6 format or WN7, which is the exact same, uh, like. Uh, calculation formula they use to calculate player efficiency as well as efficiency which does the exact same thing it just has different it's just weighted differently so as you can see here uh, this number uh, 76 represents my overall XVM rating this number here is uh, scaled out of 100 100 being the best and 0 being uh, the worst it's really useful for kind of gauging uh, how well a player plays the game if they're good or not it, it's um you know uh, and it's also color coded too and the color codings actually will provide a uh, like a level in terms of the uh, what's good what's bad what's not and uh, so on and so forth and um, I th I'll show it up here on the screen here real fast uh, the, num the number of coordinations of uh, giving the players ratings um, then here uh, this number here is obviously just the efficiency number itself, the score you've achieved. This just breaks it down into an easier number for you to understand. Um, WN6, this format, uh, this formula, what it, it's, how it's different from efficiency is that it calculates more heavily on d the damage you do as a player, as well as the tier vehicle that you're doing the damage in. So if you are playing a lot of low tier vehicles, if you fall in the baby seal clubber category, your WN6 is not going to necessarily be high just because you done a, did a, a ton of kills. It really does factor in tier level as well as the amount of damage you do based off that tier. So if you're playing the fastest way to increase your WN6 is to play higher tier games and to make sure that you deal um, at least the amount of your tank's HP's damage is this is the substandard. So if I'm playing my E50 Ausf M, which has uh, 2,050 hit points, if I'm not doing 2,050 hit points worth of damage, which is the equivalent of my tank, then I'm detrimentally affecting my WN6. I hope that makes sense. Um, the efficiency. Uh, rating system, which is the second one here. Uh, this one is a little bit different. It doesn't calculate as heavily on damage done. It actually factors in all the different factors you can do to win. So that with that that'll be spot points, cap points, um, uh, tracking damage points, assist points as, as they're called, um, defense points, all those different kind of uh, points that you can obtain by doing different things, they're all weighted higher in the game. Damage is still factored into efficiency, but it isn't rated as high. Um, I would say this stat is much more important for scout tanks and uh, for tanks that are more in the support role that are doing that kind of stuff. If you have a high efficiency scout, they know what the hell they're doing and efficiency is a stat you're going to want to monitor. Um, as for the my personal preference on these two stats, which one I do I think is more important? Um, I think that uh, f in many senses because WN6 is more difficult to obtain a higher scale uh, damage is just for whatever reason WN6 is usually always lower than efficiency I'm going to say that because it's harder to obtain I believe that it's a more important stat simply because of that aspect. Um, efficiency is incredibly important don't get me wrong and that's how come you have both the stats there but, um, you know, it's generally speaking, the WN6, because it's harder to obtain, usually will highlight a player's skills more so than efficiency. Anyway, uh, enough about that. Um, the other thing you'll notice here is uh, I'm going to switch here to a different tank type here. Uh, these buttons here located, these extra buttons, they do pretty much exactly what you think they do. Uh, the standard uh, service record, if you have a stock set up and you don't have XVM, um, it will scale um, based off of how many battles you have in the vehicle. Um, sometimes if there's a ton of tanks and you're trying to look at another player and see which vehicles your opponent has or um, you know if looking at another clan mate or whatever it is um, that's a lot of stuff that's a lot of information to sift through that's just a lot of tanks to try to find a specific vehicle if that's what you're looking for uh, so to make things easier what they've done is they've added in all these extra buttons so um, this one here is for all my masteries uh, for all like your wins you can actually scale it the opposite way so if you want to see who which tanks you're doing the worst in etc etc it's and it does that for all these buttons. Really, uh, just more level of organization. 
um, makes it easier for you to sift through that data. Um, now, if we're looking at specifics, let's go to here to, uh, let's see, let's pick a tank. Uh, let's do my E50 OSAM. So looking here at my tank, you'll also notice that the stats have actually changed. Uh, in addition to seeing the overall results, you actually will get um, a more uh, specific a set of data for each tank that you click on. So, boom, the stats will change based off my Jagdpanzer to my E50. Awesome. Uh, here, again, the sufficiency number is the same as this number here. Same stat. Uh, the only difference is, is that it's opposed to scaling it on a 100 scale like they have in this on the top section. This bottom one, which is uh, for your specific vehicle, scaled on a, uh, one, uh, a 0 to 10 scale. So, 8 is essentially 80, or in the 80s area, which is pretty much identical to this efficiency. That's, so it's just scaled a little bit smaller. That's, that's all it means. Um, you'll also see these three sections here, player, average, and top. What these represent is your actual average. This here is your KD, is uh, my KD ratio, or your KD ratio. Um, then um, right here is your damage ratio, your average damage you do in the tank. Uh, the player average, so the average of every single person that owns an E50 OSAM, this is the average number of ta uh, uh, tanks, they just, their average K KD ratio is 0 0.95, and then their average damage is 16.32, and then the last number being top, what the top player who has an E50 OSAM, what their stat is. Um, that's... You know, it's great for kind of gauging to see where you where you fall. I like to say that most of my stuff falls above average, and um, I kind of am a stat whore, and I'll admit it. I know I'm not the best player in the game, but I've been trying really hard to improve my game. So it's kind of fun to actually see where you fall on your stat sections, as well as it also provides you with um, these... Do you see, if you see the battles participated sections, it actually will tell you how far you need to go to the higher percentage of win rates if that's what you track, as well as you know your average survivability, etc. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, service record side of the XBM. Um, once you get into battle with XBM, um, XBM will also provide you detailed data data, excuse me, on every single individual player that's in the game and that color coordination code that I showed you guys will actually represent each player so you can see who's good at the game, who's bad at the game. It's great for uh, kind of also seeing uh, who are going to be the people on the opposing team that know what the hell they're going to be doing and then the people that may not necessarily um, play as good as they should be. I mean, but uh, don't take my word for it, XVM isn't foolproof and uh, to rely solely on XVM is a huge mistake. Um, never underestimate your opponent just because of a yellow coding rating system. The mechanic cannot factor in luck. It can't factor in, um, you know, players being sharp on their game or making good choices. It just, it cannot factor in those random events of time that happen. So there's, oh, it's, don't use it as a crutch to the point that you can just openly and willingly take advantage of players. Um, other than that, um, I think that's as much as I can show you guys here on this side of things of my mods. Um, I'm going to now go into game to kind of explain the other mods I have here, so uh, let's go ahead and jump in game so we can look at that real okay, fast. Okay, so here we are in game. Now, uh, the first uh, part of this mod I'm going to discuss is the minimap mod. Uh, the minimap mod actually comes included with XVM, so if you do download XVM, you should be able to get the minimap mod by standard. And the minimap mod, in my opinion, is probably one of the most useful mods you can obtain in the game. This yellow uh, circle represents your tank's uh, view range on the map. So if your tank has 400, you know, view range, it's going to be represented by that um, that outer circle uh, right there. Very, very useful. Um, and anything within that uh, in the circle, you're going to be able to see physically by yourself. Um, this extra line here, this uh, moving uh, square line circle, your, this uh, square grid uh, shape you're seeing on the outside, that represents the tank's your tank's overall uh, entire site page. Um, this is going to come more into factor if you have uh, scouts or a forward spot or a forward observer. 
that's going to be able to spot vehicles outside of your own physical view range. Targets like that Type 59 and that Ferdinand fall in that area where I can actually see, I can see those targets only because I have those Tiger II and those T-34s and those tanks are spotting for me. If they weren't there, I would not physically be able to see them. Um, the other thing that the, um, the mod also does is it also tells you the last seen positions of enemy vehicles. So if a tank gets spotted, their name will pop up on the, on the minimap as the Tiger II and stuff did. And as soon as I move out of the view range where I cannot see them no longer, or I can't spot the target, they will then gray out as they did there. You can see that just popped there. Um, really useful for helping you kind of see what kind of vehicles you might run into on whatever flank it is that you're heading and uh, of those sorts of things. It uh, really can kind of help you get a better battlefield situational awareness and that's incredibly important if you want to succeed. Um, the other mod that I have included here also is uh, the Melty Math uh, mod, if I'm saying it right. Uh, um, this mod is essentially a site mod that has some cool nifty features on it. Uh, in addition to providing uh, really a lot of uh, useful stats on it, um, it also just really, you know, has a nice clean interface. I like the kind of futuristic, like, way the sites look. It's just, it's really, it's a clean, small a site that isn't overly, uh, in my opinion, uh, interfering on the screen. Uh, the, the mod also uh, comes included with a very accurate damage indicator. And that's this, uh, this like, line thing here that actually will show you where you were uh, fired from more accurately. So you can kind of gauge exactly where it is the targets are actually shooting. Um, the other thing that comes also included with the uh, Melty Math Math mod is you also get this protractor feature, which will actually uh, calculate your average armor value of your tank. And then the two numbers, those two, if you saw those two green, uh, those two numbers there, uh, the uh, 208 represents my penetration. And then that other number that re came up, uh, that was uh, slashed, represents the tank's armor, based off what I'm ang angry. So 206 is my pen, 89 is the enemy armor's value. So it's useful to kind of help you gauge whether or not you can pen the target. Um, that being said, I find that that element of this mod needs more refinement. It doesn't seem to work every single time. So, um, you know, don't rely too much on that uh, particular uh, mod so much. But the protractor mod, this one here, is very useful for helping you make sure that your armor is angled accordingly, especially if that's something that you're not the best at. Um, just making sure that you get the right angles so your armor is at the most effective uh, amount it can be based off of the enemy tank you're aiming at. It comes into factor based off whatever you're aiming at. So always uh, keep your uh, ridicule aimed on the target and then rotate your tank accordingly as just keeping your uh, gun on target or the protractor won't work properly. Um, other than that, uh, the other mods I have included on here are some audio mods. I've never liked the uh, in-game audio too much. I've never really been a big fan of the uh, in-game sounds. It, I just always felt like it needed more refinement. So um, what I've done is I've changed out all the engine sounds and changed out all the gun sounds with uh, two mods. Uh, Gnome Fathers uh, helped on both of them. He's a really good modder. I highly recommend uh, trying out his sound mods. They add in a deeper and higher level of immersion. You get that gun reload sound that you guys have probably heard in my video a few times, as well as distinctive engine noises for each of the tanks. Uh, so if your tank has like, you know, if, you're, if the tank was diesel, you get more of a diesel sound. Gas, uh, you know, the uh, gas turbine engines that was that were on the uh, M4 Shermans because they were they were actual gasoline tanks. They sound a little bit more differently. Um, it kind of adds in a little extra level of immersion and makes the game seem a, a little bit more realistic. Um, the other thing that is another factor is, you know, in the gun sights, there's also some other noises and stuff that come up. But uh, nonetheless, if you guys do like them, what I'm going to do at this point, since we're, we're kind of running short on video, is um, I'm going to turn the audio up right now on the uh, client so you guys can hear a little bit better of the mod sounds and um, you know so that way you guys can get a little bit of a taste of it and let's see here let's just turn the general volume up a bit 
and I'm just going to remain quiet for pretty much the rest of the video and uh, I'll be able to provide descriptions and stuff on where you can install these. Um, as for audio, uh, while I'm thinking about it, let me just pause here real fast. Um, just remember, when you're doing audio mods, there's another thing that's kind of special about them. Um, that res mods folder I discussed earlier, before you install any audio mod, the first thing you're going to want to do is go into your res folder and then completely copy your entire audio folder and then paste the copied folder. Do not t drag it out. Let me emphasize that. Do not copy it and then put it inside that res mods folder and then install the audio mod over it. It, it uh, That way you could actually get all the sounds. If you don't do that, then some sounds won't, the sounds that aren't modded won't show up. Um, that's just what you kind of have to do. Kind of a pain in the butt, but that's one of the little small, uh, uh, you know, differences. And then, so here, let's go ahead and listen to the sound here. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much for uh, watching. Those are pretty much all my uh, mods. I'll be uh, providing in the descriptions where you can locate all of those uh, all those modifications. Uh, the other thing too is, uh, you know, I think I may have mentioned it, but I just um, the XVM mod I have is not displaying because this is a replay. Um, there's a more detailed uh, like color coding system that actually represents on that. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that, but anyways, uh, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and um, hopefully that answered that question about what kind of mods I'm using and kind of maybe helped out those players that don't know exactly how to install them. So anyway, guys, uh, you know, check in the comments, and uh, as always, uh, please support my videos by checking them out. Spread the word about them. Uh, the more vid the views I get, the, the better things go for me. So anyways, thanks so much, guys. Take care.